Hey guys, it's me again, back with another Sonic video. Um, today, I'm just going to be talking about Sonic Movie 2, my thoughts on it, and just my thoughts on the criticism surrounding the movie in general. If you, if you haven't guessed, this is just going to be a very relaxed, conversational video. I'm not really reading a script here, I'm just talking and giving my thoughts, and I'm hoping it'll make me a little less awkward and just more, you know just more loose and fun. That's what we're trying to do here. So I have a couple of notes. So we're going to start with my review of Sonic Movie 2. To start off, I really enjoyed this movie, guys. Like, I honest to God loved it. I went with one of my friends who also loves Sonic, and we were like kids in a candy store the entire time. It was just so fun, and it wasn't perfect, but that didn't really bother me at the time, and it still really doesn't as I reflect on it because it was just such a fun experience. For someone like me, who's a diehard Sonic fan and who has been a diehard Sonic fan forever, I just, I really enjoyed it. But I'm going to be giving a full review, like full of spoilers and everything. So if you have not seen the movie, this is your chance to click off the video because I'm going all in on spoilers today. We are sinking our teeth into this movie. So let's just get out of the way what I didn't like. So we can just, you know, talk more about the positive things because there is so much negativity on the internet nowadays. So let's just get this stuff out of the way really quickly. I'm going to sound like a broken record here. You've all heard the criticisms, you know, the humor is cringy at times. The wedding scene goes on for too long and the story may be confusing for non-fans to follow. All of which are valid critiques that I agree with completely. But none of these things really drag down the movie for me. They're really small things, and every movie, even my favorite, has flaws, you know? But that doesn't really drag down the film for me. But there's one problem in particular I think this movie really suffers from that I'm surprised more people aren't talking about. That problem being the writing. Not the plot or how the characters are written, but these writers have never heard of Show, Don't Tell! The first movie had this problem at times too, but here, it's seems to be a lot more amplified. Take the scene where Sonic and Tails are talking in the bar, which by the way takes place after the best scene in cinematic history, but we'll get to that later. Tails tells Sonic about his discriminatory village and how Sonic has inspired him to leave and search for a better. It's actually a really heartwarming scene and I love it a lot, but the problem is it's so on the nose. Like, I don't think Tails needs to outright explain that Sonic inspired him. It's shown in the prior scene where Sonic convinces Tails to wave away his doubt and just go with what he feels is right. And they dance, and it's awesome, and it's very inspiring, obviously. <laughs> we see Tails loosen up, and we see the two really click. So I don't think he really needs to explain all of this, you know? And also, why not have a small flashback while Tails is talking? Like, we see his village, we see how mean they are, we see them get discriminated against for having two tails, whatever, you know? I really think that would have been a nice addition in the movie, and I'm so mad we never get to see Tails' village, you guys. I love Tails, as you know, and I just really wanted to see it. I was like, ah! my son's backstory. But anyway, another good example of this is all of the dialogue between Sonic and Tom. I really like their conflict. I think it's a very believable one that, you know, they go, they were, all, they were friends in the first movie. Like, they became friends. It was even on Sonic's bucket list. And now they kind of have this weird father-son relationship that Sonic doesn't really feel comfortable with because of, you know, still has the pain of losing Longclaw and everything. But I feel like their scenes were a little too on the nose of like, oh, you're not my dad, and then at the end, oh, I'm gonna call you dad. By the way, the scene where he calls him dad is actually really heartwarming, because I'm a sucker for, like, kind of cheesy stuff like that sometimes, but I still feel like a lot of this was really on the nose, and it could have been done a lot better, but I feel like subtlety just would have been- subtlety just would have been so- good for these guys. I feel like that really would have amplified this movie, would have really stepped it up to the next level. Because a lot of people complain that it's like a it's, it's a kid's movie, right? And it is a kid's movie, but I feel like it would have stopped feeling a lot more kiddy for the other Sonic fans if they had been more subtle in their writing, you know what I mean? I feel like that really would have made it a much better film. And that's really the main problem I have with the film. I don't really have any other big issues with it besides that the writing is really on the nose. I would think of more examples, but you you all know what I'm talking about. Let's just move on to the things that I love before I utterly lose my mind. Okay. Y'all, the characters in this movie, 
literally everyone was so likable and i love that the human characters were actually useful i thought that when sonic and or not sonic oh my god guys sorry this is what going off script does to me um when tom and maddie went to the wedding in hawaii i thought it was just a way to like shaft them from the narrative like oh we're gonna put tom and maddie in hawaii so we don't have to deal with them you know and then we'll have more time for tails and knuckles and all these big scenes but tom and maddie actually had a role in this I do wish we could have had a bit more interactions between Tom and Maddie with Tails and Knuckles, but hopefully there's more of that in the third film, you know, I understood they didn't really have enough time with literally everything they had to pack into this film. As for the other characters, wow, they did so well with Tails and Knuckles here. I've heard some people complaining that Knuckles is too stupid in this film, and he's kind of more like his boom counterpart and just being really unintelligent, but... Uh, y'all, I just don't see it, okay? I don't see it at all. Uh, all of his dumb moments, like the like the dot, dot, dot scene, <laughs> sorry, come from this ignorance about Earth rather than stupidity. Like, he's not from here, so it makes sense why certain things, like, and traditions, you know, like, all of this stuff, even things like having fun. Like, we saw his backstory. Having fun didn't really seem to be a part of his culture you know i understand why he's kind of ignorant to these things and doesn't understand them to me that's yeah that's more of ignorance and not really a stupidity thing and i just love his interactions with sonic especially when they talk about their backstory it's just so cute and satisfying even if the writing is on the nose like i said it's still really cute and heartwarming and it really does not really drag down the emotions too much for me i just think they did knuckles so well y'all i'm so happy about that now on the tails guys I don't know if I've made it obvious by now, but I really love my little flying fox, y'all. Tails is my favorite Sonic character, and not even just my favorite Sonic character, but Tails is my favorite character in all of fiction. Like, not just Sonic, but all of fiction. So, needless to say, guys, I was a little worried. Actually, no, I was extremely worried about how they were going to portray Tails in this film, but, okay, I needn't have worried. I'm so happy. Tails is actually so competent in this film. Hell, his introduction starts with him running over Knuckles with a stolen police car, saving Sonic, and then proceeding to save Sonic again while flying away later on in the scene. Yeah, forces Tails he is not. What I love about movie Tails is that they manage to make him kind of doubtful and anxious at certain times, and he's still a little insecure, kind of finding his footing in all this stuff, but he's still smart and competent. Like, Sega, that's the sweet spot. Give me more of this, please. Please, it's, it's my oxygen, please. Some people complain that he got knocked out for, like, a good chunk of the movie, but I think it's actually really clever how Maddie and Rachel use his little gadget things while while they're trying to, like, sneak past G.U.N., and I think this actually makes Tails still useful to the story, even while he's unconscious, and I just, I really love that. I really love that they didn't just kind of nerf him or sideline him. Like, he's still being useful, just, you know, like, his little gadgets. I love it. Guys, I love it. Um, the relationship between Sonic and Tails is super strong, too. Like, I was worried it would be overshadowed by Knuckles, or as- or it would be as uncompelling as most Sonic meets Tails stories in the actual canon. Yeah, guys, I said it. I'm sorry. And while it isn't perfect, I still love it. I love that they're not best friends right away, and that Sonic doesn't immediately trust him, and that there's the sense that they don't really know each other, even when they're having their little bestie moments, you know? Even after- after they become better friends, there's this moment where Tails hugs Sonic- And then instead of reciprocating it, he just pulls Tails off and he's kind of like, dude, you're coming in hot too soon. And it's actually really, it actually breaks my heart a little bit, but it's so realistic and I love it. Oh, that reminds me. That reminds me, guys. Y'all hating on the dance scene? Y'all hating on the dance scene? Need to hush up. I'm just kidding. You can like whatever you want. A lot of people say it's out of place and it adds nothing to the story and it's just trying to appeal to kids, you know, with the modern music and the dance moves and like, yeah, guys, I I understand. I get it. I understand where all of these criticisms, criticisms are coming from and they're very valid, but I have to disagree, okay? Sonic and Canon has always loved breakdancing and I think that makes this a bit more justified. It's not, like, really out of character for him to be doing this. Like, this is the Sonic we know and love in this scene. Come on, guys. He even does the Adventure One pose. How can you be mad? Also, okay, I don't think every scene in a movie needs to advance the plot. Hear me out for one second, okay? I think if a scene doesn't advance the plot, but it provides growth or bonding moments or just, like, good character moments, it's still a worthy addition to the film. Like, sure, the scene doesn't really add to the plot at, like, at all, but it lets us see Sonic and Tails bond. We see how Sonic inspires Tails to break out of his shell, and this feels like the true moment they click as friends, you know, finally if that makes sense. Like, they've just kind of been strangers for the rest of the movie, and they've, like, they've gotten along, you know, had their little moments, but 
this is where they finally click and we see them like laughing and having fun and tails flying them around and it's just it's all great this is where they truly feel like they're becoming friends and not just you know people working together you know if that makes sense also i was laughing my ass off this entire time so that also helped i think the sheer bizarreness of the scene also makes it work guys i really love it it's the sheer amount of heart of how heartwarming it is and how bizarre it is like the combination just really works for me i i loved it so much y'all best scene best scene in cinematic history yeah okay next team sonic i don't think i've mentioned this but i'm a huge sucker for team sonic these three are not only my favorite characters in the entire franchise but their bond has just always given me so much serotonin i just think this movie captured their chaotic energy perfectly i wish we could have had more scenes of these three together but again hoping for it in the third film fingers crossed they're all so cute and i love them little side note sometimes the cgi in this movie is a little questionable which is honestly really strange but you know whatever but the actual character designs are so perfect. They fit the characters so well, and oh my god, they're so cute, guys. That also reminds me. Everyone acted the hell out of this film. Obviously, Jim Carrey was great. I love his weird energy, and he just, he plays Eggman so well, which I was not expecting going into the first film. But guys, he's killing it. He's killing it. I, I love him. I also love Agent Stone and his weird energy. He's just I, he just he just so obviously simps for Robotnik. Like, it was just so nice. It was so funny. I really hope he, he becomes, like, a bigger a- antagonist in the next movie. Because I really think he has the potential to be a really competent rival. But also, like, really funny and a kind of fun villain. And better than just seeing Eggman time and time again. Like, I love Eggman. But having a new villain exclusive to the movie series, I think, would be so good. Also, what was I talking about? Acting. Acting. Ben Schwartz killed it again i i really like ben schwartz honestly he brings that good teen energy to sonic like the more kid energy than the main canon he's just such a good actor idris elba killed it as knuckles oh my god i really like the idea of knuckles having an accent i think it works perfectly for his character and i just i love it i love it oh james marsden as tom I think James Marsden is such an underrated actor, you guys. Like, people dunk on him for always playing the human in these weird CGI animal stories, but, like, he is so convincing as Tom. Like, I think James Marsden deserves more love. He just really makes the character so lovable, and his chemistry with Sonic is really convincing. I just think it's so good. I love James Marsden. Um, another thing I don't hear people talk about a lot is how Colleen O'Shaughnessy gave the performance of her life in this film and i think she did so incredibly well and not enough people are talking about it she needs more love like uh, okay guys i'm a sonic x stan we know this by now amy pallant's tales is literally my child amy pallant is my probably my favorite tales voice actor i just love her so much she brings such a uniqueness to the character it's just so like i love amy palin i might make a separate video about this because i love amy palin but after watching this (laughs) amy's got some competition y'all tales sounds much more level here than in the games and in boom like his voice is slightly deeper and he just sounds a little like a little less airheaded than he does at other times in boom and i think this just makes him sound less and like less annoying not that he usually sounds annoying but With other voice actors, that can sometimes be a problem, but he sounds less annoying, and he sounds more cute and intelligent here, and I just, I really like it. Now onto miscellaneous things that I really liked. Super Sonic. Guys, that was a highlight. I screamed in the theater when he transformed. I love that he did that little, like, Sonic 06 toe kick thing where he, like, kicked the robot over. Guys. I loved all the references in this movie, really. Like, they were all so on point from the Adventure 1 pose to what I just talked about with the robot to pretty much everything. There were so many little references. There was a plane that said SA2 on it, and I almost cried. Um, You know, (laughs) there were so many good references. A lot of love was obviously put into this, and I really appreciate it. The end credits scene, obviously, was a highlight. Now, okay, I please don't... Please don't crucify me. I'm sorry. Shadow has never been my favorite Sonic character. Like, I like him, of course. He's a really complex, well-written character, and I love him. I love him a lot, but he's not my favorite. So, I'm I, I'm excited for him, for sure. But I kind of hope that he doesn't overshadow all the other characters in the next movie. <laughs> overshadow. <laughs> Guys, this is why I don't go off script. I literally... I can't. I can't. I can't. But... Yeah, no, I'm excited to see what they do with Shadow, though, and G-U-N. The way they introduced G-U-N was really smooth, I thought. 
a lot of people complained that their scenes kind of took too long, like the wedding scene and everything. I didn't really mind the wedding scene. It went on a little long, but it was it was fun. I laughed my ass off. I really liked that they established G.U.N. so much, just as a competent antagonist, and uh, I loved it. And I loved that he was also the commander from the first movie. I thought that was a really clever touch. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I think we're out of steam. I'm sitting in my car right now, and it's super hot. So let's let's get to the bottom of this review. So, this is something I kind of wanted to talk about for a little bit, is the criticism surrounding this movie. Now, I perfectly understand all of it. I'm not some blind Sonic fan, you know, being like, oh, this movie's perfect and it has no flaws and no one should criticize it, otherwise they're a fake fan and all of that. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying that, guys. Everyone, everyone has the right to criticize this movie because this movie is not perfect. But you can still love it, even if it's not perfect. And I feel like a lot of us, like especially me, I am someone who really enjoys looking at media with a critical lens. I love watching movies and TV shows and reading books and just seeing and just watching videos like analysis, like those analysis videos, you know what I'm talking about? Like watching these videos and how they're put together. It's just, I love looking at media through a critical lens, seeing it through a, a lens of objectivity. And I feel like a lot of the time that can be exhausting. I really enjoy being critical of media, and I think it's important to be critical of media, to expect better from media, but sometimes I just want to have some fun, you know? Like, there are certain movies I go to to look at through a critical lens. There are some movies that I just want to have fun, let out my inner child, and scream in the theater, and that's Sonic 2 for me. It has flaws, of course, and it deserves to be critiqued. I know Sonic Movie 2 has glaring flaws, but I love it anyway. I think it's really fun. I really love it. And it's okay if you like something that's not perfect. And it's okay to not look at things through the... Through the through, guys, I'm sorry. Through the critical lens all the time. I think it's perfectly okay. Because ultimately, if you enjoy it, if it makes you happy, if it gives you the serotonin, if it makes your life just a bit more bearable, then it's okay to love it. And we should all just maybe have more fun. I don't know. Maybe I'm just seeing too much negative content online lately. But I'm really into making or trying to be more positive in terms of media. Even if it's not perfect, you know, it's still emotional. It's still heartfelt. It's still a damn good time. So, yeah, watch Sonic Movie 2. <laughs> Guys, okay. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know if you like this style more than usual. Obviously, I will try and prepare a bit more for my next video because this was kind of rambling all over the place, but I honestly kind of like going off script a bit. It feels less structured and like I'm reading off a script, so I stutter all the time, even though I know there's plenty of stuttering in this. Guys, I'm so sorry. I'm still getting used to this, but I think this was a really good, really good experiment. And let me know if you guys enjoyed it or if you want me to stick to my scripted videos because they're not as much of a damn mess. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. Bye!